Welcome to Highbury Congregational Church YouTube channel. Uh, if this is your first time visiting us uh, and you like what you see, please subscribe and share to your social media platforms. Um, today is Monday and it is the 6th of July. Happy birthday, Mum. I hope Dad uh, spoils you today and I'm certainly thinking of you and uh, enjoying the memories of you being uh, here in England a year ago and being able to celebrate with you in person. We draw to the end of this little letter of James. James chapter 5, verses 13 to 20. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone in good heart? Let them sing praises. Is one of you ill? Let them send for the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer offered in faith will heal the sick person. The Lord will restore them to health. And if they've committed sins, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. A good person's prayer is very powerful and effective. Elijah was a person just like us, yet when he prayed fervently that there should be no rain, the land had no rain for three and a half years. When he prayed again, the rain poured down and the land bore crops once more. My friends, if one of you strays from the truth and another succeeds in bringing them back, you may be sure of this. The one who brings a sinner back from their erring ways will be rescuing a soul from death and cancelling a multitude of sins. Now perhaps we find this talk of healing and sin a little bit uncomfortable and so we should. James reminds us that if we're in trouble, if we're suffering, if we're undergoing hardship, then it's time to pray. I'm very much aware of the hardship and the difficulty that so many are facing. But there are those who are experiencing the joy of life, the rest of this COVID-19 period, which has been um, in some ways restorative. So if anyone's praising, well, let him praise. If you're lighthearted, sing your song, and perhaps you'll lift the hearts of those who are troubled and suffering and heavy in their hearts. Is any one of you ill? Yes, there are people who are ill. Um, I'm aware of those who are really struggling with their health. Some of the most special times in my own ministry have been when someone has been ill and as a church family, we have been able to gather around and using oil to anoint that person and simply lay hands on that individual and pray for them. Touching, moving moments. And we know that not everyone is, is healed physically, but there is a healing that does happen and a, a, a real sense of community and being together and supporting one another that happens in those times. James seems to connect uh, ill health with sin. I don't know about you, but I often think of sin in terms of individual uh, sins. Uh, I kind of grew up thinking that sin was about sweary words and about, I don't know, drinking, smoking, dancing and all that sort of stuff. You know, very much a kind of moralism. But James, I don't think, is quite so concerned about those kinds of sins. What he is concerned about is he's concerned uh, about sin in the community. So if we just retrace our steps for a moment. James is concerned about those who are arrogant, those 
who are wealthy and do not share with those who are poor. Sin is very much about the tongue and how we speak to one another. It's very much about how we treat the poor. It's very much about uh, our love for others and how, how can we praise God if we're condemning and if we're speaking bad words about others. James is very concerned uh, about fighting and quarreling and the kind of disruption that it brings to the community. And that is a kind of sickness that is very deep. We're called to humility in terms of time, knowing that today is today and, and we have no guarantee of tomorrow. The humility of entrusting ourselves to God's care, also a commitment to justice, that we would be concerned about those who are oppressed and ensure that we live in a fair society. So confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. This confessing of sins is about uh, that community. What is it that's coming between us? What is it that is dividing us? So Elijah, when he called for that drought, when he prayed for that drought, it was because of the injustice that was going on, because of King Ahab and Jezebel and, and, and the horrific experiences of the poor. And then those final verses about if someone strays from the truth and another succeeds in bringing uh, that person back, it reminds me of an experience that I had a couple of years ago. I was in a meeting and those of you who know me well know that I can be fairly direct and I can say what I think. And sometimes I don't intend to be hurtful, but I remember on this particular occasion that I said something and uh, a close friend and colleague called me up later and, and asked the question, do you think that your words were heard um, in the way that you intended? And I was pulled up. And I realized that whatever my intent had been in those words, that I'd actually caused hurt. And so that person, that friend of mine, managed to, to bring me back from that place of sin, where um, division and a kind of quarrelsome spirit had developed. And I then had to go through the process of actually approaching the people that I had hurt and say sorry and offer an apology. This business of following Jesus is, is not easy, but it's one uh, that we can do by grace. And it is by grace alone that we can enter into that deep relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So just invite you to read that passage and to ask yourself the question, what's God saying to you today? What are you being asked to do? How are you being invited to respond? Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, for those who are troubled, for those who are suffering, we pray for the grace to be able to come to you in prayer. For openness and honesty, you've heard it all before God. For those who are praising, may they sing a song and enliven us, those of us who are carrying heavy weight. And for those who are ill, those who are dealing with the effects of being separated from loved ones who are suffering, and who are dying. Lord, we pray for comfort and for strength. Hear the anger, hear the hurting, and bring your peace. And for our communities, where there is quarreling, where there is injustice, where there is arrogance, Lord, bring us to the place of humility, and we pray for those gracious people who are able to speak a true word to us and invite us to come back to the way of love, to the royal law of love. 
Lord, we offer ourselves to you with our brokenness and our failure, and we pray for your healing in our lives. And together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So God bless you in, in today's journey uh, and may you have the spirit with you.